Hi, I'm Andre. I'm going to show you how to make a laser system. So let's see how it works. So we have this emitter that emits a light beam and it gets reflected by this mirror. And if we look here, we have a sensor which is connected to this light bulb. And if we put it in the light beam, we're going to see that it makes the light bulb turn on. We can also, we have here that the material, the uh, mirror material can be applied to complex objects like this. And we also have a uh, glass material that lets the beam pass through. And normal objects will block the beam, as you can see here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create an actor. We'll first create the emitter. Let's create a container for it, a static mesh. <laughs> We're going to make this parent. And I've created a rounded cube for this. And I've also, uh, we also have a glass material that you can find this in the, uh, in the, um, the assets they get by default. Okay, so let's create the the emitter, which is gonna be a cube that we're gonna scale down like this. And in order to know in which direction the light is gonna go, we're gonna use an arrow. Now, uh, the light beam we're gonna uh, make using a line trace. So in order for the line trace to ignore the, um, uh, the glass material, we're actually gonna create a collision channel for that. So if you go into the project settings, to the collision here, you can create, uh, go ahead and create a new trace channel that you're gonna call light and uh, select the default response to block and click accept. So this will create this channel, then it's gonna be used. So if you go here into the container, to the collision, we're gonna set a custom collision. And if we go to the trace response for the light, we're actually gonna click ignore. So now the line trace will actually ignore the uh, glass material. So this is exactly we what we wanted. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can uh, cast the light rays. So let's get rid of these. We're only gonna use the event tick and we're gonna add a delay so we don't do this too often so we don't, it doesn't consume too much, too, uh, too many resources. Okay, we put 0 0.01 so that means once each 10 milliseconds. Okay, so <clears throat> here we're gonna add a function which we're gonna cast, you know, which we're gonna call cast light. And in this function, we're gonna have to pass three things. One is the location from where we uh, do the line trace. The other one is the direction in which we're going to do the line trace. And the third one is going to be the distance to which we're doing the line trace. So let's create the, two, the three here. So one is the cast origin, which is going to be a vector. The other one is cast direction, also a vector. And the third one will be cast distance, which is going to be a float. Now, cast origin and cast direction, we're going to take the arrow, its origin, its location is going to be the origin and its direction, which is going to be, which is its forward vector, is going to be our, our direction. So if you take the arrow from here and it's a get location, 
get world location actually because the line trace is gonna be in world coordinates we can plug that into the cast origin and if we get the forward vector which is actually the same direction with the arrow we can plug that into the cast direction and the cast distance we're gonna create a variable here called cast distance that is gonna be a float and we're going to set it to 10,000 which is 10 meters okay now let's see what we put into this function so we said we're going to use a line trace so let's add a line trace for a line trace by channel and here we're going to put the trace channel to light the one that we've just created and let's also uh, check trace complex so it hits the complex collision also and uh, here let's make it visible for a certain duration of 0 0.1 okay now we've consider configured the line trace we have to plug in its start and end the start is going to be the cast origin but let's go ahead and create uh, local local variables for this and we'll see afterwards why so l cast origin vector l from local uh, variable cast direction and another one l cast distance So let's set these cast origin like this cast direction and cast distance okay now here the start is going to be the cast origin In the end it's actually going to be the cast origin plus a vector which is the cast direction times the distance so we create a vector in this direction with this length here and then we add it to the location uh, of the origin so the location of the the arrow so this this is going to be the end okay so this should already work let's try it out so let's let's make this uh, simulate physics so we can move it around so let's drop this into the scene here okay so as you can see it already works and it is blocked by the player or by other objects and it passes through the glass material now we want to detect if there is a mirror and then generate another light beam and so on so in order to do that we need a loop here so we'll do a while loop so to know when we're gonna stop we're gonna add here a variable called nl continue and we're gonna plug this into the input of the while loop so by default this will be true so it executes at least one iteration and here so we've traced so let's uh, yeah of course because this is infinite so let's put this to false for now now so we're casting uh, let's take this one so we're casting from here to here okay now what we want to know is the origin 
in the direction of the next cast. So the origin is going to be actually the impact point here on the, the mesh and the direction is going to be the incident direction mirrored by the, the normal of the surface that we hit. So the normal is perpendicular to the surface, so it's going to be like this mirrored with the same angle. So let's see here. First, we want to see if we've actually hit something. So if we've hit something, then we're going to do something with it. If not, then we have to set continue to false. So we don't execute the next loop. But first, let's check this to true. So it executes the first loop. Okay. <coughs> now, now we've established that we've hit something. Let's check if we've hit a mirror. So for that, we have we add a branch here. Actually, let's put this here, and we'll see if we didn't hit the mirror. Then we also have to stop. Okay, so here, in order to check if we hit a mirror, we're going to take our hit result and break it. And to check the material that of the surface that we hit, we're going to take the component and say get material. And this function right here, get material from collision face index. So it's going to take the material of the face index and this face index is going to give it, uh, we're going to give it this one. So it's the face index that we've actually hit. So we're going to check if this material is equal to the mirror material that the mirror has. So it's this one right here, mirror material. So we plug this in here. Uh, sorry, that's not true. We plug this here. Now, here we know that we've actually hit a mirror. So what we need to do is uh, find out the cast origin and cast direction. So the cast origin, I've said that it's going to be the uh, the place that we hit, so it's going to be the impact point right here. So we'll set cast origin like this, impact point like that, and the cast direction. It's going to be the so the direct the incident direction. It's going to be the di the cast direction that we had before, and we're going to mirror it by the normal of the surface that we hit. So we take the impact normal from here and we plug it in here. And then we have the cast direction, the next cast direction. And the last thing we need to do here is set the continue to true because we want it to start again. So it makes the next line trace and so on. So let's try it out. So if we do this, as you can see, it reflects. And let's get this like this. So as you can see, it reflects multiple times. Like that and like that. So it works. Now, next thing to do is to check if we've hit a sensor. So a sensor like this one that we have here, we're going to create one and we're going to call, call it once we've hit it's uh, this material right here. So let's go ahead and create an actor. Laser sensor. So we'll also create a case for it like this we'll make it the root and here I'm gonna take a rounded cube like that and 
we're gonna add a glass material of course you can uh, use whatever container you want or no container at all but because I'm simulating physics I want them to stay at a certain distance from the surface that's why I'm doing this here so we'll add a cube for the sensor it's gonna scale down also like the other one and for the material here we're gonna take the sensor material light sensor material like this okay so let's drag this in uh, sorry about that light sensor like this okay well of course we have to simulate physics on it okay okay so now if it hits it of course well it hits the 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 glass material here so we're gonna have to go ahead here for the container also change its collision so here i'm gonna say custom collision and ignore the light so if we try again now then it passes through and but it doesn't pass through the uh, sensor material now we have to what we have to do with this is actually trip it so we activate it so here in the sensor we're gonna have to uh, actually link it to this light bulb okay or we're gonna copy it like this so we have this light bulb right here so we we'll say when this is cold then we're gonna call also the light bulb so the light bulb also uh, has just a simple interface toggle state right here which is true is on and false is off and it changes its material so you change you put it we put an emissive material on it that's very simple okay so here in our sensor we need to go into the event graph and the sensor needs to be uh, be able to be called to be changed uh, to be uh, yes we need to able to be able to change its state so for that we go into the class settings here and we'll add a toggle interface uh, set state a BPI set state yeah this one so let's just look look really uh, 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 quickly uh, where is it yes this one so you just you just create a simple um, interface like this one you add a function like this and just add an input a boolean on, oh, called on off and that's it that's really simple to create this okay so we've put the the sensor to implement this uh, interface so now in the event graph here we can add the event state event so the event toggle state so this is going to be called by our emitter to tell this that it's going to be off on or off now here what we want to do is we want to take the light bulb and uh, turn it on so we're actually gonna have to do the same thing we're gonna call this toggle state on the light bulb but for that we're gonna use uh, so this can actually uh, command uh, multiple light bulbs so let's just add here to the variables we'll add uh, we'll add a list of actors that implement the BPI interface so we'll say affected actors like this and the type will be let's say uh, set state interface like this and it's gonna be a an array okay so when this is on then we're gonna say for each <coughs> actors from here we're gonna 
call to set state like this and the the the, the input is going to be the input from this one so now this the this should be directly connected to the light bulb and other actors that may be connected okay so now uh, if we go here into the sensor, we can add, I think we have not compiled like this, okay. So if you take the sensor, we should have, um, we should have here the list, ah yes, of course, because we have to make it visible like this okay so if we add another actor here and we take the and actually we can drop this in here hmm. uh, sorry it's not this one it's the light bulb so the light bulb uh, well light bulb here not sure why it doesn't work uh, we could use so classic uh, we should be able to use the light the, the eyedropper selected well, this should work. You know what? Let's just let's just go back here and just use an actor, okay? And we'll cast it if necessary, okay? Just it's okay. Uh, like this, and we'll eliminate this, and we'll get actor. Just take this and <clears throat> save for each, like that, okay. And now here, set state, like this, okay. So we'll plug this in here. Now, this should work. So if we go back, now we have the eyebropper. I don't know why we didn't have it before, but yeah. So now we have this. <clears throat> and we can actually put two light bulbs so you, you can see this so we add a new actor and select this one <clears throat> okay so now we have the this uh, light sensor now let's go ahead in the emitter let's check if we've uh, hit um, if we've hit a sensor okay so if we didn't hit a mirror so we checked here as you can see if we hit a mirror if we didn't well I have to check again if we've hit um, so we'll do a branch here actually we'll put the false here uh, and this one here okay so now if the material equals the sensor sorry sensor light sensor material this one then <coughs> let's just leave it like this <coughs> We want to trip the sensor we want to activate the sensor so we'll take the we need the actor so we take the hit actor from here and we'll set its state like this and we'll set its state to on so let's see 
So if it's not a mirror, then we check if it's a sensor. Uh, actually plug this wrong, so it's here. <coughs> so if it's a sensor, then we activate the sensor. If it's not, it's going to stop. And actually this one, the continue, yeah. So actually the stop is going to be really at the end because... <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. If we trip the sensor, we're actually going to stop because the sensor is not transparent. So all of this goes here, as you can see here. Okay. Now, let's try again. So if we go this here, as you can see, it works. Now, what do we do with the light bulbs? Because they stay on. Because... <clears throat> when we activate them um, they just stay on because nobody deactivates them so for this we have two solutions either we deactivate the next time we remember them and we deactivate them here or in the sensor we go <coughs> here and we say each tick uh, each event tick then we're gonna deactivate this but I think we'll remember this and we'll deactivate this here because it's the most efficient from uh, a processing time point of view so now let's see so we've activated here and then we have to remember it for the next time so we're gonna have it as a variable here So just activated sensor. So we're just gonna have one, not an array, because the, sen the sensor is not. So let's put this to actor like this. Because the sensor is not transparent, we're just gonna have one here. Now, when we activate it, we'll just gonna have to set it also so set this like that and like this now we have to deactivate it the next time <coughs> <coughs> so if we go back here well actually we can do this here we just deactivate it right here. It should work. Get activated and set state to false like that. And this might make it. Uh, this might make it flicker. Let's see if it works. So we deactivate it and we reactivate it right here. So let's see if it works. As I said, it might make it a flicker, but let's see. Well, it doesn't flicker. It, sh it looks like it works. So if I block it like this, it works. And let's see if we put the sensor in the second beam so as you can see it works with the reflected beam also well uh, yeah so there you have it this is a uh, light beam oh yes of course so i almost forgot we need to do the beam this one right here so this i've chosen simple implementation for this is just um, uh, it's just a um, uh, light emitting mesh so let's see so let's create the actor for that and uh, the material we already have it 
here I've made it it's just really really simple as you can see so this is we have the color which is red and in, in intensity I've put to 100 and it's an emissive material like this so you can create that one create this one it's just very simple to create okay now let's go ahead and create this one the light beam so we're going to create an actor laser beam and we're going to use a um, cylinder like this but actually we're going to use a static mesh because the cylinder that we have by default it's actually better and I'll, I'll tell you why because it has its origin right here we can't see it right now but it has its origin right here so we can so what we're gonna do is put the cylinder with the origin here and then scale it to the end of the beam so for this we're going to use a material that we showed before light beam like this and we're gonna create a function here called set ends which is gonna set the the beginning and the end of the mesh in world coordinates so we're gonna add two variables so it's gonna be begin the vector and end here vector like that and we're gonna say so this one so it's gonna be z z like that x and y so we're gonna have to set its origin it's gonna be the begin so let's set set world location and actually it's rotation also we'll see that so the location is going to be this one the rotation is actually going to be the end minus the beginning which is going to be the vector between the two locations and we're going to normalize that so we'll take the end minus beginning which is going to make us a vector from the beginning to the end and we're going to normalize that <clears throat> so we have the, the direction in which we want and we want this direction to be in a certain uh, to, we want to make a rotation from that so this the direction we're gonna uh, actually put it parallel to the co to coincide with the z direction so we can make rotation from z like that so now i have the rotation let's just teleport it because it's simpler <coughs> it doesn't collide with anything so it doesn't matter okay so now we got the two all we need is the scale <coughs> So let's set the scale from here. I'll say static mesh like that. Set scale. Sorry, set scale. Uh, set world scale. This one. <coughs> so we we'll just split this now the scale uh, we're gonna need to set this scale uh, to the length and this the, the this two we're gonna set manually so the length is gonna be the z-axis and here we're gonna put let's say 0 0.05 so it's gonna be because 
because this one, this mesh, I know that it has one meter in length, then it's going to be five centimeters like that. And the z-axis, the D z uh, scale, it's going to be the length this minus this, but we'll take the length of the vector. So if you take the distance between the beginning and the end, and we'll put it here. Now for this to work, because this is in centimeters, this one is in meters. So we're going to divide it by 0, 0.0, uh, divide it by 100. Okay, like this. So now we have it in meters here, because this is one meter. Now, let's set the beam. So the beam should be from the beginning to the end of each cast. Okay. Uh, actually, not from the beginning to the end, but from the beginning to the impact point right here. If it has an impact point. If it doesn't, then it's going to be from the beginning to the end. So we're just going to create two variables here. We'll say beam beginning. I'll just say beam start like that. And it's going to be a vector. And beam end, which is also a vector. And they should be local. And we're gonna make them where, let's say, so we'll put, we'll make a loop, uh, we'll make, we'll execute, execute this, and then we'll execute, we'll uh, put the beams in. So we'll just add here, let's just put it like this. And from here, we'll put a sequence like that so we execute all of this and then we add the beams right here okay so let's add a beam let's add the beam first and we'll worry about the beam start and beam end so get these so to add a beam we're actually gonna uh, spawn an actor so spawn actor from class like this and the class is gonna be laser beam so this the transform just split this so it doesn't give an error we'll leave it like that it doesn't matter and here we'll take and say set ends like this and we'll put the beginning and the end like this and this should be okay. So now we've spawned the, the beams and we spawn the beam each uh, iteration of the loop and we set it and its beginning and ends. Now, because we're spawning the beams right here, we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to destroy them the next time. So we'll, let's just add them also. So we'll add a, a, not a local variable, but a variable here with beams like this, which is going to be an actor, actor like this, and an array of actors actually. So we'll just add it here, add like that uh, so uh, no sorry this okay get add like this and we'll add this okay so now we've spawned them and we've added 
them to a, uh, an array so we can destroy them next time because we're going to recreate them next time well you can you can make a pool of, of actors here if you want but i'm not gonna it's for optimization you can make a pool and use them reuse them and hide them and reuse them if you want but i'm not gonna do that here so let's see for the beam start and oh wait wait so we have to clear this so to clear this we're gonna we can clear it here for example so take this so before the the well begins so this is the next uh, time we execute this we'll, we'll say for each well, I have to uh, destroy the actor like that and then and then we're gonna clear this okay so let's see here we'll do this it's kind of messy but you get the idea so get this and when we complete we take the beams and we clear them okay like that and this will be plugged here so it continues okay So it should be something like that. Okay. Now we want to know the beam start and beam end. So in each case, there's a different um, value. So the beam start will gonna is gonna be the beam of the cast origin each time. So let's see where we can do this. We're gonna have to remember this before we change them here okay so uh, so the beam end it's gonna depend actually it's not gonna depend on so it's gonna be here because if we hit something that's then the end it's going to change if we don't hit also so it's going to be here so if we do hit something we'll set them both so let's say beam start set here and beam end set like this so the start it's actually we can put it here and just set it one time okay so it's going to be a uh, lcast origin here like that and the beam n is going to be two times one here one here like that and wait so remember this goes to continue false because it didn't hit anything so here because we didn't hit anything we're gonna put the end that we had here so yeah we can drag it like that I guess it's messy but that's how it should be so if you don't hit anything we'll put the end where ah no wait we can use this so where the trace ends but we no just let's not complicate things we'll take this from here so we'll end where we end the line trace if we didn't hit, hit anything and if we did hit something that we take the impact point from here okay like that and it should be okay now let's see might not work we did some a lot of stuff yeah wait what's happening did we what wait i think we said yes that's hap that happens because here 
in our beam we actually let it collide that's what happened okay so if we go here and select no collision then it should be okay okay that was funny okay so let's see here so we do have this okay now let's put this so this works so it blocks yeah so apparently it does work yeah so as you can see it works exactly as it should and it activate if we block this here it activate light bulbs everything yeah if we change this yeah so that's cool so there you have it so if you want you could make this using particles uh, there are plenty of tutorials on that uh, and um, yeah so that's it i hope uh, this has been useful and if you if you've liked it please like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one